This is Griselda Blanco, also known as the Black Widow. She was a Colombian drug lord that sunk her fangs deep into Miami's illegal white powder trade from the 1970s to the early 2000s. She was also reputedly part of the Medellin cartel. But why was her life intentionally ended by a mysterious figure in the most ironic way? And what did $150 worth of beef meat have to do with it? All of this and more will be answered today, so make sure to watch until the end. This is the full truth of Netflix's Griselda Blanco. I'm sure you know that Netflix is developing a crime drama miniseries titled Griselda, produced by Eric Newman, Sofia Vergara, and Louis Balaguer. To understand more about Griselda Blanco, the drug trafficker who the main character from the series is actually based on, let's travel back in time to February 14th, 1943, the day it all began. Griselda Blanco Restrepo, born in Cartagena, Colombia, and raised in Medellin from age three, was introduced to a life of crime very early on. Influenced by her mother, Ana Blanco, her exposure to criminal activities began as a child, deeply sinking into her illegal activities. Blanco's ex-lover, Charles Cosby, shared a shocking incident from her childhood, claiming that at just 11 years old, she apparently snatched and delivered a bullet wound to a child from a nearby wealthy neighborhood. This event marked the start of her notorious criminal path. By 13, Griselda had already become surprisingly good at pickpocketing, a skill that, as we're about to find out, was going to come in handy. Her intense home life, paired with the intimate harm from her mother's boyfriend, whose name is kept secret, led to Blanco running away at 19. She spent a year stealing in Medellin to survive. During this period, it is said she became a female of the night, though Blanco angrily denied these allegations. Her early years were a blend of personal turmoil and the gradual embrace of a criminal lifestyle, setting the stage for what was to come next. Griselda Blanco quickly became central in the illegal white powder trade between Colombia and major US cities like Miami, New York, and California dealers. In 1964, she entered the US illegally with a fake name, living in Queens, New York with her family. In what seemed like almost overnight, she established a profitable drug business. But things were about to take an interesting turn, for in April of 1975, she faced charges for drug conspiracy with 30 others. How did she respond to this, you might ask? Well, she ended up fleeing back to Colombia to avoid jail, though she later moved her business to Miami in the late 1970s. Her move to Miami matched the start of widespread violence and crime, leading to so many fatalities each year. This period was when the Miami Drug War or Cocaine Cowboy Wars, where the white powder was more popular than Zaza, began. Efforts to stop the illegal white powder flow in Miami led to Santac 26, a joint effort between the Miami-Dade police and the DAA. During this time, Griselda was heavily involved in the drug-related violence that shook Miami in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Her network across the US earned upwards of an eye-watering $80 million, not every year, but every month. $80 million every single month. Maybe it was this newfound wealth that played at least a partial role in her downfall, which is what we'll be discussing next. In 1985, the notorious Griselda Blanco faced a dramatic turn of events. Arrested by the DEA, she was charged with serious drug offenses. The trial, held in New York City, led to a significant 15-year sentence. Yet, this was just the beginning of her legal troubles. While serving time, Blanco's past caught up with her in the form of three first-degree harm charges in Florida, including that of a two-year-old boy. And the prosecution's key witness? George Ayala. Blanco's former hitman, whose testimony could have spelt the end for her. However, in an unexpected twist, a scandal involving Ayala and two female secretaries from the state attorney's office caused the case to crumble. Blanco later pleaded guilty to second-degree harm, adding an extra 20 years to her sentence. But in 2002, her life took another turn when she suffered a crippling heart attack, a consequence of her lifelong smoke-inhaling habit and weight struggles. This health crisis led to an unforeseen outcome in 2004. Due to her condition, Blanco was granted compassionate release and deported back to Medellin, Colombia. Living a quiet life thereafter, Blanco remained largely out of the public eye until a fateful encounter in 2012 led to her death. Her last public sighting? A mysterious appearance at a Bogota airport in May 2007. But we'll talk more on that later. 
Griselda Blanco's personal life was as messy as her criminal career. She had four husbands and bore four children, three with her first husband, Carlos Trujillo in Medellin. All were born before she turned 21. Her youngest son, Marco Corleone Blanco, named after the character from The Godfather, was with her third husband, Dario Sepulveda. The relationship with Dario ended dramatically in 1983. Following a dispute over custody of their son, Dario snatched their son Michael and returned to Colombia. Griselda, in retaliation, quite literally arranged for Dario's end of life, resulting in Michael's return to her in the US. Michael's life was filled with tragedy and instability. As reported by the Miami News Times, Michael's father and older siblings were all ended before he reached adulthood. His mother was in prison for most of his childhood and teenage years, and he was raised by his maternal grandmother and legal guardians. Despite these challenges, Michael's story continued to unfold. In 2012, he faced legal issues himself, being put under house arrest following sentencing on white powder selling charges. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I guess. Michael stepped into the public eye in recent years. He appeared on an episode of Investigation Discovery's Evil Lives Here in 2018, sharing his experiences of a lonely childhood. In 2019, he featured in VH1's Cartel Crew, a docuseries following on the descendants of drug lords. Beyond television, Michael ventured into business, founding a clothing brand named Puro Blanco. In a twist to Griselda Blanco's notorious life story, Michael revealed that his mother turned to religion in her later years, becoming a born-again Christian. This marked a significant shift from the life of crime and violence she once led, offering a glimpse into her personal transformation before her death, or as we know now, her intentional end. On a seemingly ordinary day in September 2012, Griselda Blanco, once a formidable drug lord, found herself in a situation quite different from her past life of power and notoriety. Accompanied by her pregnant daughter-in-law, Griselda was engaged in a mundane task, shopping for meat at the Cardiso Butcher Shop in Medellin, Colombia. What seemed like a routine errand on the corner of 29th Street was about to take a fatal turn. The day unfolded without hinting at the impending violence, but as Blanco exited the butcher shop, her past caught up with her in a sudden and shocking manner. A silent thug lurking on a motorcycle targeted and ended Griselda in a swift, calculated attack. In a matter of moments, she was struck by two bullets that claimed her life instantly. The method of her intentional end bore a chilling resemblance to a tactic notoriously associated with Griselda herself. This life-ending style, a drive-by from a motorcycle, was something Griselda was often credited with introducing to Miami during her reign in the white powder trade. The irony of her demise, being ended in the same manner she is said to have popularized, added a profound layer of grim poetic justice to her story. The cycle of violence that Blanco once propelled came full circle in her final moments, highlighting the perpetually dangerous and volatile nature of this world she once dominated. Her demise, mirroring the brutality she was known for, closed the chapter on a life that had been steeped in controversy, power, and bloodshed. Griselda Blanco's notoriety inspired numerous portrayals in the media. She features in documentaries Cocaine Cowboys in 2006 and its 2008 sequel. Florida rapper Jackie O's 2010 mixtape La Madrina Griselda Blanco and West Side Gun's record label Griselda Records, established in 2012, both honor her legacy. Blanco appears in songs like Meek Mill's 2012 Believe It by Rick Ross and Nicki Minaj's 2019 remix of Suga. On TV, she's played by Lucia Velasquez in Pablo Escobar the Drug Lord in 2012. Catherine Zeta-Jones in Lifetime's Cocaine Grandmother, and last but not least, Sofia Vergara in Netflix's Griselda. Our journey through Griselda Blanco's life, the godmother of white powder, shows a harsh truth beyond Netflix's glamour. From her start in crime to her end, which oddly matched her own violent ways, is a clear lesson. Crime often leads back to the same dark path. This true story is a real eye-opener about the circle of crime and its costs. Got your heart racing, didn't we? Hit that subscribe button and join us on this thrilling journey. And hey, drop a comment below if there's a topic that's been keeping you up at night. We might just turn the spotlight on it next.